Alright, so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a vintage postcard. So we'll be working in Illustrator and then exporting it to Photoshop and this is kind of what it's going to look like in the end. So what you're going to need is you're going to need to go into the design resources and you're going to need to download two different types of fonts. The first font you're going to need to download is the um, condensed extra bold font. So as a reminder to download a font, you just have to double click on it and hit install and either Illustrator or Photoshop will pop up. And then the second font that you need to download is the Sign Painter House Script Regular. Again, you just have to double click on it and hit install and either Photoshop or Illustrator will pop up once it's finished. So once you are um, finished with downloading those fonts, you're going to have to open up a new Illustrator workspace. So you're going to go up to Fire, File, New, and then click up here in the print menu, size A3, orientation landscape, and then hit create. Once your workspace is up, you can move some windows around so you can see what you're doing. And you're going to go to the left hand side and select the text tool. You're just going to click on the screen and type the location and we're going to do all capital letters. So for the ter uh, purposes of this tutorial, you're just going to, in all capital letters, type in Narnia and then highlight your words and we want that font that we had downloaded earlier, um, the Futura Condensed Extra Bold. So you can just type it in and then you want to make it a lot bigger than it currently is. So you might have to type in um, some numbers to see what works best for you. Looks like 300 works best for me. And I'm just going to place it kind of in the middle there. So we want to again make sure our words highlighted. So you might have to click that type tool again and highlight your words. And with the words still highlighted, on that top toolbar, you're going to click character, which is right by the font. And I want you to reduce the tracking to negative 50%. So it's this little VA. And we're going to make it negative 50. Basically, this is going to be bringing the letters a lot closer together. So once you click out of it, it'll show you that the letters are closer together. And then again, with the word still highlighted, you want to also adjust the font size to fill the page. So I did 300 before. If you need to go up a little bit more, you can, but I think I'm going to stick with um, 300. Um, and then I'm going to take the selection tool and move it toward the center. As a reminder, make sure that you have your smart guides on so you can just go to view smart guides. Smart guides just help you out and they tell you when something's in the middle and things like that. So, uh, with the selection tool on, you want to right click on the word and you want to go to create outlines. So, what this does, it's going to turn the font into a series of vector shapes. So at the top, you're going to go up to Object, and then Path, and then Offset Path. You're going to offset it by two pixels, and you want the joins to be round. And then you can also click Preview to see what it looks like. And when you're finished, go ahead and hit OK. So what you're going to do now is you're going to give the new enlarged shape 
a light gray fill. So you might not be able to see it right now, but you can zoom in and you can see when you hover over it, there's two different shapes. So we're going to take this new shape and we're going to give it a uh, like a light gray fill. So I'm going to go up here and just give it a light gray fill. So again, you want to give the enlarged shape a light gray fill. If for some reason it's not doing that, you can just double click and isolate those areas in order to shade them in. So make sure that you're still on the gray part and not selected, and you're going to repeat the same step. Object, Path, Offset, Path. Again, you want to have um, two here for the offset, and you want round joins. Go ahead and click OK. And this time around, we are going to give it a blue fill. So just like that. So you might have noticed that you don't see all three colors and that sometimes you'll only see just black and blue. So to fix it, you can just use the selection tool and draw a box over the entire word. And then you can right click and select ungroup to break apart these three sets of text shapes. So if I zoom out, I can ungroup each of these and color them how I want them to be. So you might have noticed that some of the colors are overlapping each other. So what we can do is that you can hold the shift key and carefully select all of the blue outlines. If you didn't ungroup before, you can drag your mouse over your word, right click, ungroup. So if I zoom in here, you can see where all those blue areas overlap one another. So I can just take each little blue part and I hold shift and I can do the first two so you can see. But because those two blue areas are overlapping, what I can do is I can right click on them and then arrange and then send backwards so that when I click it moves them backwards and you can just take some time to send each different part backwards um, again you have to make sure that your shapes are ungrouped Once you have all of your blue areas sent to the back, um, what you can do is you can make a selection of all of the original black shapes by holding the shift key. So I can click on these little black areas of all the letters. And then I can right click, arrange, bring to front. And so that will bring the black to the front. So I'm going to zoom out here so you can see what I'm doing. What you're going to do next is you're going to draw a selection around the entire word. And then you're going to right click and group all your letters together. Okay. The next thing that we want to do is make sure your text is still, still selected and then at the top toolbar, you're going to go to Effect, 3D, Extrude and Bevel. The following things you're going to enter in. You're going to do 1%, or sorry, 1 degree, 1 degree, 0 degrees. You're going to change the Extrude Depth to 1000. And then you're going to change the surface option to no shading. And what I like to do is I like to click the preview button to see what it looks like. And you can tweak it to your liking. When you're done, go ahead and click OK. 
you can click on the white part to see what your letters now look like. But then we're going to go ahead and again make sure your whole text is selected. Go up to Object, Expand Appearance. And basically what this does is that it converts the 3D effect into a series of shapes. So what you're going to do is you're going to right click and then hit ungroup. And you're just going to keep doing that until that option is no longer there. So it took me about three or four to do that. So again, you're going to repeatedly right click um, and then select ungroup until that option no longer is appears and basically it you have to do this in order to completely break the object apart so the next thing that you're gonna do is again make sure your words all selected and you want to hold the shift key and select all the shapes that form the extruded part parts along the bottom edge of each other so just click out of here real quick and if I hover these are the pieces that I want to change the color of. So I'm going to click on the first piece and you want to hold the shift key and just select all of the bottom pieces. So hold the shift key and select all of the bottom pieces. You're going to change the fill color to either a bright red or bright orange. I'm going to choose red. And then if you click out of that area, you'll see the areas that you missed that you might have to go back and fill in. So if you missed any areas, go back and fill them in. Or if you accidentally colored an area, you can fix that. So once you are finished with coloring all the bottom pieces that color, and again, if you find a piece later on that just needs adjusted, you can go ahead and adjust it. If you make a mistake, you can go to Edit, Undo. But make sure you try to get all those little pieces the right color. And if it helps, sometimes it helps to zoom in to see the different pieces and parts that you may have missed. So we're going to zoom out, make sure we have all of the pieces that we want colored. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to draw a selection over the entire artwork. So draw a selection over the entire artwork. And then you're going to hit Control C to copy, followed by Control F to paste in the front. And then we're going to click the Unite button in the Pathfinder panel. So I have mine up. If you don't, you can just go up to Window, 
in Pathfinder to open it up. And again, you want to hit the Unite button. What you're going to find out is that when you hit the Unite button, it's going to merge everything into one single shape and one single color. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to switch the fill and stroke selections around in the toolbar to give this shape a blue outline. So we're just going to go over here to the left and we're going to swap them out essentially. So all you have to do is click this and so that this is no fill and this turns that blue and you will see that it looks um, like it should from the beginning. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to increase the stroke weight to two points. So all you have to do is go up to the top and increase it to two points. So the next thing we're going to do after that is we're going to take the magic wand tool over on the left hand side to quickly select those red orange shapes. So all I have to do is click this once and it selects all those colors. And what we're going to do with them is we're going to duplicate them. So we're going to hit control C and then control F to paste in to the front. So on the right hand side, you're going to select the gradient and change the fill to black and white. So on the right hand side, you're going to find gradient. And if you can't find that window again, just go up to window and change the gradient. So in this gradient window, you're going to select and change the fill black to white okay, and adjust the angle to 90%. So you're going to click this and then the angle 90 degrees. And then we're going to go up to effect, pixelate, and then color halftone and a window is going to appear. So we're going to have um, five for the max radius and we're just going to do 45 in each of the channels. When you're done, go ahead and hit OK. And then what you're going to do is you're going to change the blending modes of these shapes. So to find the blending modes, you are going to go to the transparency window. If you want to find that the easy way, you can just go to uh, window transparency. And once you're in the transparency window here, you're going to change the blending mode to burn. So change it to burn. color burn. Sometimes multiply or darken might work best for you. So if you don't like this one, um, let's try multiply. Some people like that one or darken. So figure out which one you like um, and works best for you. So you want that half tone effect to interact with the bright shapes below and then you're going to reduce the opacity in that transparency window to about 30% mm, or so. And again, you can adjust as need be and you can figure out what works out for you. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some more text to this. So we're going to zoom out here just to see all of our letters. And you can go ahead and use the selection tool to kind of click out and see what you're doing. You can minimize any of the windows that are in your way. And you're going to zoom out. And what we're going to do is we're going to lay out some ac accompanying text uh, above and below the 3D wording. So we use that hand script font called Sign Painter that we downloaded at the very beginning. So 
we're going to use the text tool and I'm just going to type in the word greetings. We're going to highlight it all and we're going to type in sign painter and we're going to make this a lot smaller. So find a font that works, font size that works best for you. I'm probably going to stick with about a hundred and this is going to say greetings from. You might have noticed that the tracking is super close together so make sure that you highlight your word and reset that tracking. So to reset that tracking you have to go up to character and just reset it back to zero and click out of that menu and you'll notice your words look a lot better now. So you also want to add in the text down below. So with that same um, type of font and the same size, you're going to make another box. And another selection. So sometimes you'll have to click on the selection tool and then go back to your type text tool and type in Kingdom of Aslan. And again, you can adjust the font as necessary and you might have to use the selection tool to move it around. So what you wanna do is you want to copy the text elements and you wanna paste them in the back to create a duplicate. So you're gonna to have to select the words Control C, Control B to paste in the back. And you want to nudge the copies down a little bit. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see what happens. Because I have something in the back, if I nudge them down a little bit, you can see there's two copies now. What you're going to do is you are going to color that a different color. So we're going to color the one in the back a light gray. Okay, similar to the light gray that you did um, at the beginning. So then I'm going to go and I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to do the same thing to the other word. So we're going to select the whole word. So draw a box around it. We're going to do control C to copy, control B to paste in the back. And we're going to move it over a little bit and you want it to be the same as the first one you did and you're going to color that the same gray that you did before so that when I zoom out and look at it as a whole, it's the same gray, it's about the same um, spacing as the other one. And if you need to go and adjust, you can. I noticed that my gray was slightly different, so you can change that instantly. So what you're gonna do next is you're gonna select all using the control shortcut. So make sure that the spacing and everything looks good, that everything's where you want it to be. You can use the selection tool to adjust things as necessary. If you make a mistake, you can do edit, undo, move. So if I wanted to get both things from greetings from and move them, I have to make sure that I grab them all at once. Same thing with Kingdom of Aslan. So we're gonna select the whole thing once we're happy with the spacing. And we're gonna go and to object and then envelope distort and make with warp. We're gonna select an option here called rise and we're gonna do a bend of about 30 percent and again you can adjust this as necessary as you see fit and then we want to make sure that we hit the preview button mine was already selected um, just so you could see what yours will look like in the end
When you're finished, hit OK. And you want to take the whole thing and make sure that your whole word is now in the middle. What you're going to do now is you're going to go up to um, and save your work. So we're going to save as an Illustrator file. So file, save as. We're going to put it on our desktop. We're going to do first name, last name, Narnia card. Hit save. And then just make sure that it's an Illustrator file. Um, when you're finished, you're going to hit OK. It's going to take a second to save. And then we're ready to move on to Photoshop.